Okay, last lesson was looking at arithmetic progressions, and this is now moving on to geometric progressions. The difference between them, arithmetic progressions um, had a constant difference between each term, so you were adding on a number each time. This time you're making your sequence by multiplying by a constant each time. So something like this, where each of our terms is being doubled as you go along. So we get a fixed um, difference as a multiplier rather than a, a constant being added. Or something like this. This time our multiplier is a negative number, and that's okay as well. You can also have fractions as your multiplier too, which would make your, um, your numbers get uh, smaller as you go along. Okay, so some terminology. Our first term we call a, the same as we did with arithmetic progressions. But this time we're talking about the common ratio when we're talking about the difference between the numbers. So that's this number here, the multiplier that you um, use to create your sequence. And that is referred to as R for ratio. Then our GP looks like this, where our first term is A. You get the second term by multiplying the first term by the ratio, so that's AR. You'd get the third term by multiplying the second term by the ratio, so AR times R gives us AR squared. And then the next one you times by r again, so you get ar cubed, and so on, all the way up to ar to the n minus 1 for the nth term. Okay, so we can also do a sum of a GP like we did for arithmetic progressions. So let's follow through the working th here. Uh, you can talk about your sum of um, the first n terms looking like this. So setting out your GP, adding them all up. Now if we multiply every one of those terms by r, we will get r lots of the sum. So the first term multiplied by r would give us ar, the second term would be ar squared, and so on, until we end up with ar to the n at the end. Now you'll notice that some of those match up on each of those. We've got an ar and an ar, an ar squared and an ar squared, and so on, all the way to the end, um, just not including that a in the sn formula and not including the ar to the n in our r times sn formula. Okay, so now if we think about that top line there, if we want to describe that bit that matches, we would talk about it as being our sn without the a. So sn minus a is that bit that matches. Now on the second line, for r times r sum of uh, the first n terms, this section here, we can talk about it as being the rsn, but without the a to the rn at the end. So those two bits match up, they have to be equal to each other. Now we can rearrange this to get our formula for the sum of the first n terms. So if we put um, rearrange them like this, and then factorise, then we can sort out what s of n would be, like this. Now there's your important formula that you need to know how to use. You don't have to reproduce how we created that, you just need to know how to use it, it just helps to see where it comes from sometimes. Okay, you can also use this in an alternative form like this, where you'll notice the Rn and the 1 have been swapped over on the top, and the, um, just one moment, there we go, and the R and the 1 on the bottom are reversed as well. So that is equivalent, but it only works if R is greater than 1. Sometimes you might want to use this one to make your numbers a little easier and avoid negatives. Okay, so, examples. We want to find an expression for the nth term and the sum of the first 10 terms of this GP. So our first term is 81, our common ratio is a third, it's being multiplied by a third to get the next term each time. So our nth term looks like this. And our sum of the first 10 terms, we're going to put the relevant uh, parts into this formula. So replacing a, r and n we can work out the sum of the first 10 terms is 121.5. Okay, next example. Uh, you're going to earn 1 cent on the 1st of April, 2 cents on the 2nd of April, 4 cents on the 3rd, 8 cents on the 4th, and so on. So it doubles every day, but you start off with only 1 cent. Doesn't sound like a particularly good deal, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so our sequence looks like this. So our first uh, term is 1, the ratio is 2 because it's being doubled each time. So our nth term, which I've abbreviated as Tn, so term number n, uh, will be 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. So we want to find the 25th term, so we put in our numbers for that, and you get 
$167,772.16. Quite a lot for the 25th of April. So that soon added up as you started doubling along. Okay, now our total over the month. So we want our sum formula. We've put in the, the A and the R value. We've got 30 days in April, so we're putting in N equals 30. And it looks like this. 1,073,741,823 dollars earned in a month just by starting on one cent on the first and two cents on the second. This is an example of how quickly these progressions can add up. Now what about um, thinking about how long it would take to earn over a million dollars? So you've just seen that you get way above that by the end of the month. So on what day would you have hit the one million dollar mark? So we're going to use our formula for the sum. I've just simplified it a little from part B there. Um, and I'm actually going to use it in its reversed form because I'd like to avoid the negatives because they kind of make things difficult when you're doing these types of questions. So like I showed you on the previous slide, um, just reversing those things around. And I can do that because R is bigger than 1. Okay, so we get this final formula of 2n to the minus 1. We want it to be more than a million. So rearrange that and you get this equation or inequality to solve. Uh, now at this stage, you are only expected to do trial and error to solve that. So if you do, you'll find that n needs to be bigger than 19. So n has to be 20 days to have made more than $1 million. Now at this stage here, you can actually use logs to solve this, but uh, knowledge of logs isn't expected till next year. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, I would actually strongly recommend you do learn this little trick because it makes things a little faster. So I'm going to show you how to do this on the next slide. Although it's not strictly necessary, it does help things. So let's go back to this question. And where you get to the point of 2 to the power of n being greater than a million and one, that's where logs can help you. So we use this little rule over here, where log of a to the power of n is the same as n times log of a. So we take log of both sides here, and then we use that little formula that's up there on the left to replace log of two to the power of n as n log two. That means we can divide through by log two you just need to be careful here because if you multiply or divide by a negative, that will switch your inequality around. In this case, that hasn't happened because log 2 is positive. And then once you do that division, you'll get 19.1. So n, sorry, 19.9. N has to be bigger than that. So n must be 20 days to have reached over a million dollars. Nice, easy thing to do if you can remember those log things. It's much faster than trial and error, but it's not a necessity. And one final little point, uh, geometric progressions help you to make pretty pictures like this that's used in um, artwork called fractals, which uh, involve geometric progressions where the ratio is a fraction and they can be programmed into a computer to make things like this.